You're listening to the Greenheart Travel Podcast. This episode is moderated by Associate Director of High School and Short-Term Programs, Allison Yates, and Short-Term Programs Coordinator, Connor Cargill. Our guest is Noah Torres, who attended Teen Summer Language Camp in France for two summers in a row. All right, so I'm Noah Torres. I'm from Los Angeles. I've been here all my life, and I did the French summer lang- language camp in uh, Argachon for the past two summers, 2019 and 2018. If we're not mistaken, you lived with the same host family two years in a row. When I was filling out the application for the first time, I was writing down all my preferences, and I got matched with an awesome host family, the mom, Maureen, and the dad, Christoph, and I had three host brothers. One was 16. His name was Ramon. I was 17 the first time. And then I had Baptiste, who I believe was 12, and Axel, who was 10. So it was a couple little kids and one that was my age, and it was just really cool to match that energy, and they were really nice all the way through, and yeah, both years I was with them. They've come to visit you as well, right? Yeah, so after the first summer, it was only two weeks with him. We developed that bond, but it was still like there was that language barrier, and it took me maybe the first week to really get comfortable with them. Then I started talking more, and they would use what English they knew if they needed to, and I would use what French I knew. And so we stayed in touch after when I came back home, just talking about how things were. Um, there were a few fires in California, so they were all they were always checking up on me. And then uh, I wanted to go back because I had such a, an amazing experience, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to try something new. And they told me that they would love to host me again. And I was like, oh, that'd be awesome. I don't have to worry about anything else. I'd, I'd love to go back and see them. So that second time I went, it was a lot just, it was a lot smoother. And it was, we just kind of picked up from where we left off. And it was kind of like they were my, uh, I don't know, longtime family friends. And it was just, it was awesome to be with them again. You and I were talking last summer, Noah, and you were mentioning that there was a possibility of your host brothers potentially visiting you in the United States. How have those plans developed? It was Ramon and Baptiste. Ramon, I think he was 17 that time, 16 or 17. Baptiste, I think 12 or 13. Uh, They actually came back with me when I came back to the U.S. So um, their mom just bought tickets for the same plane. We kind of coordinated that. We made sure we had the same flight number. They were here with me for, I think, two and a half weeks. And we showed them around uh, L.A., all the landmarks, the beaches. And, yeah, they they loved it. Did you, like, translate English to French the whole time? Or what was the... What were the language barriers like? How'd you it, was actually, it was hilarious because they, they knew a little bit of English, but they're crazy soccer fans and they were really proud, proud about winning the World Cup um, <clears throat> the year before. And my dad is a really big soccer fan. So it's kind of like names are universal. So they were just throwing names out there and then like playing charades. There wasn't much of a language barrier there. Um, they were using everything they knew. It was just really fun. We kind of just forgot about the language barrier. And it was, we would do charades. We'd uh, talk however we could. Yeah, it was just fun. Yeah, a lot of people get super nervous about language barriers and you're like, how am I going to communicate who I am to this other person? But honestly, what happens is that like you all kind of meet up at this barrier together and you figure it out. Yeah, exactly. They weren't expecting me or anyone in my family to be fluent. So they went in like trying to find how how they were going to communicate. It's not like there's any expectation that you need to meet. It's just they're ready to talk to you. And it's about having fun and getting to meet them. It's not about like criticizing anyone. How did that visit of them in America affect your parents in America? Actually, my mom, my mom has had this thing where every year she wants to go to Costa Rica just for vacation purposes. And now she wants to go visit them in France because it was just two weeks, but like everything, getting to know them, trying to communicate, it was just fun and hilarious. She actually cried when they left. So yeah, we, we really want to go back and see them. I wanted to see them winter break, but college apps kept me back. So I'm hoping to go back. Like there's something so special about international relationships. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you're all the way over there and that's all you know for two weeks, they're essentially your family. And that's kind of how you, you see them when you go over there. That They're all you know. So it's, yeah, it's a really, really strong and unique relationship. They're not just regular friends or anything. What do you think is the biggest thing you've learned from living with them? Either about yourself or about France? Well, I learned a ton of French, and it's like just the way I'm able to speak it. I'm, that, that's a given. If somebody goes over there, you're going to learn the language. But what I really learned is like how to be independent and how to make new friends, because it's not just your host family. It's also your classmates, and they're from all around the world. So you'll have people that speak your language, maybe, maybe not. They'll speak a ton of other languages, and they all want to meet you because you, you, you want to know about the other countries. So once you 
immerse yourself in that kind of environment, you're going to develop some leadership skills, which I think it definitely did. And definitely independence because you're counting on yourself to make these friends to get through it. So I'm a lot more confident and, and independent. Like I want to just like leave my family and go like backpacking or something. That'd be awesome. Um, but like, I want to take them to see all of these different cultures too. So it's just really I don't know, becoming more confident in yourself, I think. And how have you found that that confidence has like manifested back in the United States? Like, the first two years of high school were really slow for me. I was still getting used to high school. And then going into uh, junior year, I just put myself, um, I immersed myself in that language camp when I came back. I was a lot more adventurous. I started taking uh, more extracurriculars and after school classes because when you're here, you think go to school, go home. But then once you take yourself independently to another country, it's like you get, there's more than that. I can, I can stay here. I have time. I can do more things with my life. So like in, in terms of uh, classes, also, I've definitely been more outspoken. I feel like I have more to say. Like I, my eyes are a little bit more open. Um, but it's really just trusting myself that I can do more. I'm so excited for wherever you end up and whatever path you end up taking. So speaking about the French that you learned, can you talk about comparing the first year, your French learning versus the second year and how one built off of the other? I had only one year of French in school uh, going into that first summer I was there. So that, that was just one year. It's not a lot, but you know, it's the basics. But when I was there, I found out I didn't really need to like memorize every single conjugation like they wanted me to do in school it, it was just when you're there you learn how to speak it like a local you get I, I don't know i've just been calling it street fluent you start speaking how they speak it it's not really like what they teach you in school um but it was still really rusty because I, I wasn't too comfortable transitioning into it um so i was picking up what i could and when i came back i definitely was like practicing all these new words that i'd never heard of before and like even some french slang here and there and then the second year, I went back already knowing, like, oh, it's it's just, I'm going to learn it again. I'm not going in thinking that I know everything. I'm going to go in and try to pick up as much as I can. Going in with that, being really open to it, that boosts you a lot. So instead of just having one week transitioning and one week learning, going in, having, like, both weeks, um, I'm ready to learn. It was really, it was a lot more powerful, and I was able to speak a lot more fluidly. What's your favorite thing to say in French? I, I don't know. Well... I think it's it's a uh, lupe, but just because there's a story to that, that, that means kind of like lost or missed. One time on the way to school, I missed the train, and I said that I like je perdu le train, like I kind of I, I don't know where I put the train. Um, and I told the teacher that when I walked in, and then she corrected me and she was like, oh, it's lupe, and I was like, oh, that's like, cool. that's a cool way to learn a word. I missed the train. I, I learned a word. So I, there, there's just a story to that, but yeah, I like that word, kind of lost. Yes, I love the stories where you remember the exact moment when you learned a word or you always think of that person or that moment. That's really fun. And also realizing that like direct translation a lot of times doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I have always heard out, I want to know your thoughts on this, but so I um, also speak another foreign language and so does Allison and part of that process is learning that direct translation doesn't make sense. And a lot of the times people say the best way to like feel comfortable with speaking that foreign language is to stop translating in your head and try to let it kind of flow freely. Do you have words on that or do you have any other advice for people who are learning a foreign language and, and what worked best for you? Yeah, I never actually really thought about that, but I think I just kind of did it. Like it just kind of happened. I, I stopped trying to, I don't know, word it in English and then in French. And it started becoming more natural to where I would just search for the words in French. I wouldn't even consider English when I was talking. Are you in French in school in Los Angeles? No, um, that actually, what frustrated me was I had that one year of French and the teacher retired. So sophomore year, I had Spanish, uh, Spanish one. And I already, uh, I, I kind of know Spanish um, because my family is Hispanic. I didn't want to go through that. So that's when I started searching for language camps. What I've learned is actually mostly from the language camps and maybe a little bit I've retained from that one year of French. What are ways, if any, that you've explored of like maintaining your French? Because it could be really easy to lose it, right? Like I'd say if possible, any friends you make or your host family, just message them. And it could be casual. You don't need to email or anything. Just Instagram, Facebook, anything. Just messaging them. Like I know it's not speaking it, but writing it, it's very similar. And you don't need to write really like 
you can write casually and it's really easy. Um, other than that, I bought a French book. It is like American French, so it's gonna be, it's not gonna be as like the same thing as in France, but it's still French. So just looking at that and seeing if I know these words, doing all the exercises, doing that if I can. The most valuable part has just been, you know, calling the host family um, or messaging them, just keeping in touch and that helps a lot. So Noah, you got credit from your teen summer language camp, didn't you? I did from both of them, yeah. And how did you go about that process? So, well, first, what did you get? What credits did you get? And how did you do that? So for the first summer, I got credits for French 2A, which is one semester. And then the second summer, I got credits for French 2B, which is the second semester. And that together is one year. Um, so what I did to do that is the first thing I did, I went to the head counselor, the assistant principal of counseling, and I told him, just casually, briefly, I said, I did this program, I went to France uh, for two weeks and there were French classes. Can you help me get credits? I'll, I'll write you a letter. And then I asked uh, you, Miss Yates, for a letter as well to give to him. And so I came back a week uh, later and gave him uh, just my letter where I explained what I did. So he knows it's, it's personal for me and then your letter as well. After that, he took about a week before he got back to me. And he said that he would need to talk to you directly. So I gave him your contact information. Uh, you just handled that. And it was really amazing, really quick. What he did is he signed some forms from my school district. I don't know if every school district is going to have those. But what it is, is it's learning a language from an outside source. And he was able to write down CEI, Green Heart Travel. And he was able to get me those credits as if I actually took them um, in school. That's awesome. So did that save you some credits or did you have another free period or how did that affect your graduation? So I actually now have, technically I have three years of language. So that's one year of Spanish and two years of French. Those definitely saved me some time because I, I, I did go through Spanish one, but with those credits from the French summer language camp, I, I got extra credits because I had taken Spanish, which I did not want to take. Um, and then summer credits on top of that. So I had two free periods this year, and I used that to take peer counseling uh, for college applications. So I had a lot of extra time. And it was really, it was just really cool to say that I have extra credits and they came from me going outside of the country. If you do go to university, do you think maybe French would be involved in that in some sort of way or international culture? I always plan on going to a, a four year university, but after the first uh, language camp, I, I, found out that it was important to me uh, to kind of find international opportunities as I can for studying abroad. So that wasn't necessarily a make or break decision for me, but I did have that to filter through my top college choices um, and where I applied to see if they would have opportunities for me to study abroad. I do want to go into international business, and part of that was inspired by uh, Green Heart Travel and going um, outside of the country because I want to be able to travel when I'm older. I really do want to take language courses, but it's not something that I'd major in, but it would be amazing to be able to take a college course on the side, French or like, I'd consider any language actually, just like, I just want to be able to learn more so I can travel more and communicate more to meet more people and more families. So that definitely impacted like what I want to do and where I want to go. I did apply actually to two universities abroad, one in Ireland and one in Scotland, which I would not have done if I didn't have that confidence built up. And I know it's a little late now, but I'm still looking at universities in France. It's just a little more complicated because it's a whole separate application. But I, I honestly would not mind going uh, to study all four years abroad. On how many applications that you sent in to universities did you mention your experience in France? It might have been all of them because for UCs, it's just one application. So they do a holistic review where they want to see like every part of you, like every like extracurricular you've done. And I wrote down Green Heart Travel language camps and they wanted me to talk about why it was important to me, why I listed it there. And I, and then for private schools, it's the common app. That's where I put down uh, the language camps and they wanted me to write, I think maybe 25 to 50 words on what it was and where I went. So I think it was, it was every single application. I do have a final question now. <laughs> it's, it's a two-parter too. Basically just imagining either sitting down with your former self or imagining sitting down with a student and maybe their parent who are nervous about this experience and like, well, what am I going to do every day and how am I going to maneuver like public transportation? All these things that seem really scary. 
What would you say to these people or your prior self? What got me the most, actually, what I was most worried about is maneuvering, like, just this, the airport, like, the small things. Just because I'd never done this by myself, the airports, they want you to get to where you want to get. So all the transportation, is, it's all there for you. Everybody's going to help you. It's like they want you to get to your flight. You paid for it. So in France, the transportation there, it's really – actually, I liked being in France. The metro was so much cleaner, or the, the train was so much cleaner. You can't really worry about what you're going to do in France and what you're going to learn because everybody's going to take away something different. They're going to learn something different about themselves. You just kind of have to accept that you're there and accept that it's a learning experience. You can't really go in having expectations like this is what I want to learn. This is how I'm going to learn it. You have to just take it in as you go because it's going to be a different experience for everybody uh, where you are and like the type of people that you're with. Like accepting it's a learning experience and nothing is going to be exactly how you envisioned it and that's going to help you the most and like with all the stuff that that comes with it like the transportation getting there airports thanks for sharing everything that you learned and everything that you want to do in the future like i said at the beginning we're so excited for you and we think you're amazing and we're so happy that you are a green heart traveler oh yeah of course i mean i'm wearing the shirt I don't know if you <laughs> that's awesome this guy <laughs>